Hey, oh, so I want to do a quick video on this guy right here. Boom. Here's my drawing of the guy, and there is no image of him. This is from my imagination of what I think he may have looked like. The man I drew is Yasake, the only black samurai in Japan. And let me say, <laughs> this is a pretty dope story. Yasake was an African, and he was a Mozambique. His name was not originally Yasake, but there are a lot of theories of what his name actually was. So for simplicity's sake, I'll call him Yasake. At some point of time, it was never recorded when he was put under the ownership of an Italian man named Alessandro Vigliano, a Jesuit missionary. Yeah, I know it sucks because he's pretty much a slave now. Anyways, Alessandro was a missionary for the Catholics. His specific belief was to spread the story of Jesus in the most dangerous places. He was appointed over the Indies for his area to cover. At some point, Alessandro, and therefore Yasake, arrived in the Asian territories in 1579. Everyone in Asia was astounded by him due to his height and skin color because it was very uncommon to see people that look like him there, mostly because he was of the darker complexion and he was 6'2", when the average male height in Asia back then was around 5 foot to 5 foot 3. Anyways, on March 23rd, 1581, they reached Japan, and then they were brought to the Japanese dynamo at the time, Arano Nobaga. Nobaga thought Yasaki was a painted black with ink, so he had him stripped down and they scrubbed him to take off the ink. After an explanation, Obaga learned that that was his skin color and he was very impressed. He also noticed Yasaki seemed very healthy with very good demeanor. He also noticed that Yasaki was very strong. Nobaga's nephew was so impressed that he gave Yasaki a bunch of money on the first time meeting him. On May 14th, Yasaki and the missionaries left for the Eschen province. During this time, they came across warlords. These warlords were actually named and it's part of history. Their names were Shibata Kayosoto, Habisha Haidakatsu, and Shibata Kasui. For some reason, they went back to Nobaga, maybe because they got attacked by the warlords and needed help or something. I, I really don't know. They don't really say why. But they returned to Kyoto on May 30th. And at some point, Yasake entered Nobaga's service, although we don't know why or when. From doing my own research, I found out that it's most likely that Nobaga wanted to keep Yasake and Alessandro was willing to sell him. I know it's super messed up to talk about selling someone to someone else, but sadly that's how it was back then and we can't really change history, so. Anyways, Nobaga bought Yasaki from Alessandro and Yusake stayed there in Japan. And let me just say, I don't think Nobaga bought him. I'm truly led to believe that he bought his freedom, and I'll tell you why I believe this. This is when Yasaki was given the name Yasaki, as opposed to his African name that, yet again, we don't know. He was taught Japanese, and Nobaga was very pleased with him. But like I said, this wasn't no racist Alabama slave owner deal, right? Like, this guy cared about him. Nobaga gave Yasaki his own house. Like, his own house. No strings attached. He had his own house. And he also gave Yasaki a ceremonial katana. And let me say, to receive a katana from someone of his position was the highest honor. So Yasaki was most definitely treated with the most respect as he stayed in Japan. Yasaki was treated like a human here, unlike some other places that existed at the time, and was most likely a part of Nobaga's family. Yasaki fought in battles alongside Nobaga and he was well known due to him being 6'2". He stood out among all the white 5'2 Japanese soldiers so people started to know him because, I mean, come on, you saw him walking by, you're like, oh, is that Jimmy? Nah, that's Yasaki. Around this time, Yasake was also a pro sumo wrestler. Nobaga was known for his love of sumo wrestling, and this is one of the only images we have of Yasake, and here it is right now. Boom! This is my drawing of the image, and here's the real image. Okay, back to mine. <laughs> Yasake was obviously on the left, and the man on the right was either Nobaga himself or Tariori Hariyoshi. And saying that Hasaki was wrestling with people that had such high ranks, this means Yasake was most likely a samurai, and a well-known samurai at that. It's never said when he became one, but he was a samurai. In June 1582, Nobaga was attacked and forced to commit seppuku by the warlord Akechi Mitsuishide. I probably butchered it. Yasaki tried to, his best to fight them off, but his master still died. So instantly he joined Odono Botara, Nobaga's sons. That also shows that Yasaki cared about this family because at that point he could have just left. But he chose to stay and help his master's heir. So anyways, Noboto was trying to attack Nisho Castle to either get revenge or just take back what they took. Yasaka fought alongside with him, but they were outnumbered and beaten. Now, there's questionable credibility about this next part, but I'll keep it in anyways. Yasaka got captured by the warlord, Akechi, and he said that Yasuki was, and bear with me, this gets pretty bad. Akechi said that he is an animal, meaning that he's not Japanese, so they should not kill him. They took him to the Christian church in Kyoto. After that, we don't know. 
Isuki's story drops dead cold here and there is no more written information. And I hate that because that junk was so cool. I wish I knew what happened next. <laughs> but due to my amazing spectacular imagination, I came up with my own endings. So warning, this is my own idea. This is not recorded anywhere in history. This is my own childish imagination, all right? The three things I think could have happened were, number one, the most likely outcome, Yasaki stayed at the church in Kyoto and grew old. Number two, and this is less likely, he went to go join another family name, but I highly doubt that happened because it would have been recorded in history. Or number three, and most likely the most fictional, Yasaki went anime protagonist mode and took on the whole army which goes against history, but that would be dope. Sadly, we will never know the history. So anyways, that was the story of Yasaki, a Mozambique man that went from a slave to a reverend samurai in old Japan.